Yes. Good morning. Welcome to Biology 1120, Anatomy and Physiology, Chapter 29, Human Development. So for the first part of the lecture, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, fertilization and pre-embryonic development. That will be part one. So we just saw a great video about um, sperm migration. It was a uh, time lapse. Actually, I don't even think it was time lapse, was it? But it showed uh, sperm migrating. So about 500 million or so starting their migration um, from the vagina through cervical mucus, which is quite thick and difficult to get through. And then, you know, there are two tubes from which, for which the sperm can travel and there are chemicals exuded from the egg to guide the sperm toward the egg. But, you know, some sperm go the wrong tube. A lot gets stuck in the vagina, a lot gets stuck on the walls of the uterus. So not very many sperm make it in the end. The majority don't really make it. They're destroyed by such things as um, acid, the vagina is an acidic place. Some cannot penetrate the cervical canal. Some go up the wrong uterine tube. How do they move? They move by lashing the flagellum, the tail called the flagellum, and assisted by female physiology. So there are some strands of cervical mucus that lay a little bit of a pathway, like a bit of a landing strip. Uh, the uterine contractions also through um, prostaglandins in semen, they are also helping the sperm along their way and chemical attraction. So chemicals that are exuded by the egg. So how long does this migration take? Um, about 10 minutes from ejaculation, the spermatozoa can reach the uterine tube, but they cannot fertilize the egg unless they go under a procedure known as capacitation. So initially the sperm has the acrosome and the acrosome is sealed within the membrane of the, the sperm itself. So the, the fertilization cannot occur until capacitation has occurred and that requires about 10 hours. It's basically making the sperm ready to fuse with the egg membrane. So it starts with the fluids of the female that washes away cholesterol and inhibitory factors that are embedded in the membrane of the sperm. So the membrane becomes more fragile and permeable to calcium. And calcium uh, helps to allow acrosomes, the acrosomal enzymes, to be released. Sperm is fertile for about 48 hours after ejaculation, and conception is optimal if sperm are deposited any time from between 48 hours before ovulation to about 14 hours after. Fertilization requires an acrosomal reaction. So the sperm are now capacitated, the acrosomes can be released, but interestingly, you need the release from many sperm in order to break through the granulosa cells that are around the egg. And finally, the zona pellucida that has been laid down by granulosa cells before the egg was ovulated. So the name of the enzymes is hyaluronidase and acrosin. And they manage to penetrate through those barriers. But when the very first sperm uh, fuses, then there's, there's a block to any other sperm. And it happens quite quickly. There's, it happens quickly and slowly. So there's a fast block for prevention of polyspermy. That means more than one sperm or many sperm entering the egg. The prevention of polysperm, well, the first prevention, the fast block is just depolarization of the membrane. So we know how fast that happens because that's the same thing that happens with action potentials. 
so by opening of sodium channels. And that prevents the binding of a second sperm. The polarization has just reversed. The slow block is um, the triggering of calcium, which flows in and causes something known as a cortical reaction. There's granules, uh, very tiny granules that form and they form a solid barrier. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a video shortly. Yeah, fertilization. So this is the egg. And the cells, the corona radiata are the outer cells. Uh, the zona pellucida, which is a gel-like substance surrounding the egg. And once the sperm fuses with the egg, it goes through meiosis two, completes meiosis two. Therefore, we have uh, a polar body. Yeah. So acrosomal reaction, here are the acrosomes and the enzymes that are released and they release and dissolve the sona pellucida and the external, um, the external structures. So it does, it happens very, very quickly, very, very quickly. Just one makes it through in the end. Only, only one generally can bind with a plasma membrane. So once that happens, the um, fast block is very, very quick. Development starts to occur early on. Uh, here is the secondary oocyte been ovulated, the sperm cells penetrate, the nuclei at first are separate, and then they fuse. When they fuse, they formed a structure known as a zygote. The zygote it starts to undergo division quite, quite quickly, but it doesn't get larger at first. So the structure, even, even the blastocyst itself stays about the same size. So all of the nutrition and organelles that are required by the daughter cells through mitosis are there already in the egg. Yeah, so um, yeah, the pronuclei rupture chromosomes mix, and we have our zygote. And it continues through the stages of, of what's called cleavage. The cell cleaves in two, and then it cleaves again. Each cell cleaves into um, two cells. You get an eight cell stage, and in 72 hours, a morula, which is a ball of cells. The cells keep going through mitosis, until a blastocyst is formed. And the blastocyst has a hollow center, the blastocele, and it will implant in about six days. And this occurs traveling down the uterine tube and into the uterus. So the first stages of development occur before implantation, before six days. So um, the pre-embryonic stage, the first two weeks, mitotic divisions over and over. Uh, they occur for about three days. Within 30 hours, there's a two cell stage. The zygote splits in half. Within 72 hours, the morula stage, a solid ball of cells. It's free in the uterine cavity for four or five days. What is it nourished by? 
uh, endometrial secretion. So the placenta hasn't formed yet. The embryo isn't getting nutrition from its own trophoblast yet, but there is uh, endometrial secretion in the uterus um, that provides nutrition. The zona pellucida disintegrates and releases the blastocyst. It's a hollow sphere. It includes the trophoblast. That's the very outer cells that help to form the placenta. The inner cell mass, inner cell mass, sorry, is the embryo blast, and that will develop into the embryo. Yeah, so we saw that already. Twins. It is possible to get twins. Sometimes two eggs are ovulated and both fertilized. If that's the case, there are two zygotes and they will be as different as any other siblings. There's another form of twins called monozygotic or maternal twins. That means that one egg is fertilized, there's one zygote, but the embryo blast splits into two at some stage. And those siblings are genetically identical. So they will be the same sex. There are dizygotic twins. So I'm going to stop there for now. Thank you.